What actor is a one hit wonder? That black dude from Tropic Thunder. I haven't seen him in anything since, but he really killed that role. Didn't he play War Machine a few years later? No, that was Tim Meadows. Well, he can do the robot. Carrot 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 thatr will carrot 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 be carrot 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 dollar sign 5000. Ah uh, good are they carrot 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 to carrot 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 yu carrot 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 both. He's a dude playing a dude who's playing another dude. Greatest movie ever. Ad absurd goddess mistake. Jack Gleason as Joffrey. He said in an interview that acting was boring and he won't do it again. Sorta of false. He was sick of the fame infamy from playing on a popular TV show. He is still going to school for theater and has even funded a troupe with his profits from playing Joffrey. Off screen he is a well spoken and likable young man. He was most interesting to me off screen because of the contrast. Spoilers once his part in the show ended I sought out a bunch of clips of him out of character to help me separate my hatred of the character from him as a person. Totally agree he is well spoken and likable and the contrast is definitely interesting. If you have to put any kind if work into making yourself believe that the actor is nothing like their character, they've done a good job. George Lazenby. He talked his way into playing James Bond in On Her Majesty's Secret Service, and even though he's done a lot of stuff since, nobody remembers any of it. Jake Lloyd, who played young Anakin in Phantom Menace 15 CRS on IMDb, 8 of them are for Phantom Menace and its video game offshoots. A. He had Jingle All The Way too, which has turned into a bit of a Christmas cult classic. I feel like counting child actors isn't fair, since they rarely end up having too many roles after childhood. How did I not notice that before? I watch Jingle All The Way every year. Poor kid. He's been depressed his whole life because he feels like he ruined Star Wars and Darth Vader. Apparently he doesn't realize it was all because George Lucas is a terrible director when it comes to acting. Everyone in those movies was terrible. I disagree. Who and McGregor nailed it as a B1. Josh Ratner Aka Ted Mosby from How I Met Your Mother. He did a couple movies that sort of had a Zatch Braff vibe to them, although not particularly well received. Yeah he strikes me as the kind of guy that's like well, I made my him and money, now I'm going to stick to artistic ventures. Also, it's extremely hard to see him as anything but Schmosby. They were just mopier Ted movies. That's a good description of him, we couldn't get Zach Braff, so let's just get Josh Radner. Poor Ted, he killed that role. I really enjoyed liberal arts. I'm going to make a prediction, and say Kid Harrington is going to end up being a one hit wonder. Pretty much every movie he has starred in has bombed, and he doesn't seem to have a ton of acting range. Plus he comes off as sort of bland in the interviews I've seen of him. He seems like a good dude though, and I would love to be proven wrong. If only to keep up the god theme, Rob Stark was solid in the movie, where he plays a con artist. He also starred in The Bodyguard, that was pretty huge. Harrison Ford is pretty bland in interviews too, or at least pretty dry. He's still a phenomenal actor. Nikki Blonsky from Hairspray. I guess she had a main role on her one season of Huge 2 but otherwise, it's say she's a one hit wonder. Hey it's me Nikki Blonsky from the movie Hairspray. Oh wow that's actually a little sad. Belongs in our cringe ethics. This makes me think the real Nikki Blonsky is tied up in a Scientology basement somewhere. From the movie Hairspray? Oof. That actually bums me out hard. If this is real, then I feel sorry for her. Back in the 1990s, I would have told you David Caruso got stellar reviews from the first season of NYPD Blue, so he quit to go be a big time movie star. But he's not a one hit wonder, because the story doesn't end there. Once the movie thing didn't work out, he swallowed his pride, went back to TV, and became a legend as debt. Sunglasses on CSI Miami. Yeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
so that's how it is in their family. Do you have a kiss for daddy? Sloane Myasero was also in Time Cop with Jane Claude Van Damme. Whenever there's a talented woman actor who just disappeared after a while, I wonder if they had a run-in with Weinstein or similar and got blacklisted. She was frozen in the late 80s and then thawed out to play Nancy in Stranger Things. Miranda Cosgrove. I feel like she dropped off the face of the earth after iCarly ended. Same with Victoria Justice and Victorious, just saying my childhood and preteenhood was ruined when both of those shows ended. That seems to be the case for most of these shows. I feel like doing that type of show for a while ends up typecasting all the actors who eventually grow out of these roles. The same thing happened with Bridget Mendler. She tried to break out into music I like, but she basically disappeared once Good Luck Charlie ended. Even Josh Peck who seems to be doing pretty well for himself is still largely remembered for Drake and Josh. Ariana Grande is the only exception I can think of. I'd say she has gotten way more fame from her music career than her acting. Ariana, Millie, Zendaya and two, three Jonas Brothers. They're the only ones I can think of that have had considerable success outside of Disney Nickelodeon. Selena and Demi also maybe. Oh yeah, I don't know how I forgot about Zendaya. Zac Efron too. He seems to be doing pretty well. Michael Richards, Kramer on Scenefold. He was doing color commentary for a bit. Whoa, my second gold ever. Many thanks. He was the janitor in UHF. He was also in Airheads. I first knew him as the bow tie killer. I was in the Merchant Marines. Who wants to drink from the fire hose? His name is Stanley Spadowski. I can't see Sheldon Cooper being anything but Sheldon Cooper. Jim Parsons was good in Hidden Figures. I remember he was supposed to be this mean bad guy, and I had a hard time breaking away from his goofball BBT character. He plays a really good lawyer on Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil and Vile. He did do a good job, but I still was like hey it's Sheldon Cooper. No matter what he does in the future he will always remind me of Sheldon, I just can't shake that. It's because he pretty much just acts like himself. His voice doesn't really help the matter. It's quite unique, in a high-pitched winny way. If you count the entire series as one entity, I kind of doubt Nyavardalus ever has any relevancy outside of the My Big Fat Greek movies. She was really good in my life in ruins, but, again, it's about being Greek in Greece. That's quite the typecast. I loved her with Tony Collette in Connie and Carla, but you're right. Danny Lloyd, the kid from The Shining. He teaches at a community college now in my hometown in Kentucky. He doesn't like talking about the movie too much either. I remember reading an interview he did where he said that the movie isn't scary to him at all, and that it's more like watching an old home movie. From what I heard Kubrick really sheltered and nurtured him where he told him that he was going to be in a family movie. I was thinking Kubrick making a horror movie plus young child actor he needs a good performance from could go either way. I'm glad to hear he was cool. He just took it out on Shelley Duvall. Rainier Wolf Castle and McBain. He was also Radioactive Man. He was going to be until they cancelled it mid-production after the goggles did nothing. My yes. The goggles do nothing. I loved him in help. My son is a nerd. My son returns from a fancy East Coast college, and I'm horrified to find he's a nerd. Hash 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 M E N D O O O O O O O Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z Z A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A A J Davidson from The Crying Game. Oscar nominated for his first role, did Staggart after, then basically vanished from films. Marina Sirtis, she was known for playing Counselor Troy on Star Trek The Next Generation and its associated movies. Other than that, she really has not had any significant roles in anything else, and has effectively banked the rest of her fame on just that. Only other thing seems to be a brief stint on Gargoyles. Your name is Commander underscore Shepard underscore, and you leave out the fact that she was one of the main villains in Mass Effect, Matriarch Benesia. For shame. She was also a voice in XCOM2 War of the Chosen as one of the female options for the Reapers.
along with Jonathan Frakes as the Reaper's commander, Michael Dorn as a male skirmisher, Denise Crosby as the skirmisher leader, John D. Lancey as the Templar commander and White Charles Lieutenant. Barclay as a Templar soldier. War of the Chosen was a huge TNG reunion. I instantly recognized Dawn and Certis, but Frakes snuck up on me. Jaleel White pretty much the entire Family Matters cast Hayden Christensen saw to bark her dabdy pirate from Captain Phillips Tamak the Last Dragon. Excuse me, Sonic the Hedgehog didn't just voice himself. Reginald Vell Johnson has been a cop in every role of his. Less of a one-hit wonder, just typecast. Wasn't he the good cop in that Christmas movie with Bruce Willis? Carl on duty, Black Cops. Jamie Foxworth from Family Matters starred in a bunch of videos after the show. The chick that was the childlike empress in Neverending Story. Who a six-year-old me really liked eight-year-old her. Say her name, Bastion please. Moonchild. No seriously, look it up, that's his mom's name. Tammy Stronach. I'm kinda surprised this isn't higher up. Come to think of it, were the other two kid stars ever in anything else? I know Noah Hathaway was in Space 1999 whoops, Battlestar actually before this, and I think I read somewhere that he's a tattoo artist now. Tanner Lautner from Twilight. He was supposed to be the next Hollywood heartthrob. His career is basically dead. Because he didn't grow. He was a jacked teenager, but now he's just a short small adult. Huh. I didn't realize he's 5 feet 9, I thought he was at least 6. That's average height for a US man, but prob short for Hollywood. He could still be fine though, Zac Efron is only 5 feet 8. Zac is charismatic on camera though. And funny. I have no idea if Taylor Lautner is funny, but Zac Efron was hilarious in Baywatch and The Neighbors. Paul Hogan, aside from the Crocodile Dundee movies he had little success outside of his native horse, this partly due to long-running tax disputes ruining his reputation and earning potential according to his agent. Uh, excuse me, he was in Flipper with Ella Jawood.